Yeah, I got one more FanDuel read for you guys today because I just want to remind everybody that as the weather gets colder, <coughs> the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and a lot more. You guys can go visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. So we had a G push special here for today <laughs> and that Mike yeah. came up with last night, and unfortunately G can't make it. But if you guys haven't noticed, Amani Bates is lighting up the G League. Yes. We knew that He's was going to work. We knew that was going to happen. It He's is. Work. It is the developmental league. It's the Gatorade League. Now. Listen, the, what's the question? <laughs> still a de- <laughs> developmental league. Wait, state the question. The question was. <laughs> And G. Bush let us know at 10 this morning he wasn't coming in. So this was the G. Bush cook special, but you're not getting a ton of production from Dean Wade. Mm-hmm. You're not getting a ton of production from Isaac Okoro. Struess playing well. Lavert's playing well. And the Yang's getting better, but mm-hmm. his numbers aren't there. You look at what Amani Bates is doing in the G League, mm-hmm. and if you don't know, Tell us. I'll give you the numbers. He's averaging 27.4 <laughs> points per game. That is number one in the entire G League, 27.4. He's shooting 45% from the floor, 45% from three in six games this season. (coughs) Six games. He's 29 of 65 from three. He's averaging 11 three-point attempts per game. What is that, Mikey? That's over 40%. It's 45%. It's phenomenal. On 11 attempts per game, he's averaging 4.7 rebounds, 1.8 steals, 1.7 blocks. Don't ask me about the assists because I ain't going to tell you because it sucks. But I ain't going to tell you. Zero point something. (laughs) Wait a minute. I played the fifth. You're not wrong, but zero. I played the fifth. Listen, I'm going to be G. Bush. If G. Bush was here, he would say this. He said he would have been up here, man. I don't know what JB got going over there. D-Way, get him out of there. We don't need to see him in the lineup no more. Don't even know why he's still here. Max Struess, you playing with fire right now because we got this young boy that's about to come up here. Listen, man, they need a spark on this team, man. Amani Bates can come in there every night. Think about this. You need shooting. When y'all do y'all best is when y'all shooting. You got a guy that shoots that with no hesitation. Now, he didn't got better. He'd have had a couple of minutes in some games this season. He had a couple of decent games. But if he lighting up the G League right now, we ain't getting nothing else from the bench. Why not give my young boy the shot? What else we got to lose? So we all do our G Bush That's my G Bush right there. That's you exactly what G was saying. G Bush. That's what G was saying. I, G Bush is I don't need to see. Delivery. I don't need to see Dean Wade. Not another minute. Isaac Okoro, get him out of here. He was a waste of pick. Uh, N- He's Nian, a jag. Yeah, Nian, He's just a guy. Yang is just a guy that's out there just getting a couple of buckets. We got a guy that can get you 15 at least. I've got a question for the bench. Yes, because he follows this way more closely than either of us. Because he has friends, I think, that probably have jobs in the G League, I'm guessing. I do, I do. A couple GMs. So here's what I want to know from you. <laughs> because I honestly, I don't know. Uh, I have a guess. How often is G League production transferable to the NBA? It's a great question. So... And, and there, examples. There, there's no defense in the G League. Which is why he's shooting Zero 45%. Zero people play defense. The, right. the average score in a G League game is like 130 to 130. It looks like all-star five. game scores. Yeah. And every, I mean, I, I was looking at this morning. I think there's 17 guys averaging 23 or more points in the G League this year. Yeah. Like. Defense is de- optional. It's defense optional. I think it's why they changed it from the D League to the G League because. You can't defense spell is frank, Frankly, just optional. Right. What does translate, though, is, is shooting. Well, it's the same no, three point I don't line. think it does because I think if, if you've got hands in your face. Okay, well, here's the difference. And this is a compliment and the downside of Imani Bates. It's not like they're running plays for Imani Bates. It is Imani Bates going one-on-one. <laughs> and what, even is the, uh, what is the offense? Is, is, do they even run an offense? <laughs> they call okay, it. Okay, yes, I guess and no. They I've watched a little bit of it. I, not this year, but I've watched it's, a little bit of it in the past, and I'm like, Man, this looks like my pickup game. Yeah, so it's a lot of up and down, which is why it, it the scores are high. Like yeah, def- once again, defense option. But it, doesn't it to you all, seem all freelance? A lot of it's freelance, but I think when you're going, like say me and Tyrus playing one on one, and Amani Bates is very good in these one on one situations. That's what he was good at coming out of college. That's yeah. what we knew he was good at. It's not like a dude's just letting him shoot over him. When it's one on one, you're getting isoed out. There's a little bit of pride on the line there too. I sure. Agree. And the fact that Amani is shooting. 45% from three, 
on almost exclusively, I, I think I was doing the, the math this morning, it was like 73% are off the dribble threes. So that's him wow. going with it's not so like he's, he's creating coming off that shot. He's not creating catch and shoot. exactly very little catch and shoot threes for him. So he's So how much of that is transferable to the NBA? Like if he were to take the same number of threes in the NBA, what what are, what are his numbers this year in the not NBA? Good. Don't ask. No, I I, I it's I, I, asked I, I, do, I don't know off the top of my head. Earl, we we look up what's Amani's NBA stats this year. He's only gotten a couple games. No, I know, and I know it's a small sample size, but I asked because I do think <laughs> it's relevant because yeah. The, Look, the, the difference I expect is, him to dominate the so, G League. I, I really do. So you ask, is it transferable? The, the, the answer right now is no. Because Imani Bates is a one-on-one player. If you watch any Cavs games, what's the last thing they need more of? They, don't, they do not need another so, iso st- baller. So stylistically, it is not transferable. No. Is the shot making transferable? Yeah, that's, yes. It is, is the ability to create a shot transferable? Well, yes. Is his, he's actually he's hustling on defense. You don't just walk into two blocks and two steals per game. I'm right. telling you that. Is the effort <laughs> transferable? Yes. And five rebounds. Well, two five, games. This, Stylistically, though, I don't think how Abani is succeeding in the G League fits with how the Cavs are currently playing. Well, see, that's my issue. Yeah, okay. I don't, and, I don't like and that's why it. I asked that question. Well, I don't like that, though, because that's, a, that's an indictment on the coach there. Because if you got a bunch of players right now that's playing ISO ball, then that means that's that's what you you coach in. So your you send him down there specifically to play, so then, we can fit into an offense. Right. And but I'll, I'll tell him. I'll say this. I don't know who the, the G League coach is for the Cavs. I'm, I'm not sure. Either. I don't know who it is. But I'll say this because I do follow baseball very closely, and I I even pay attention to minor league baseball, and I spend a little bit of time in the minor leagues, and this is probably the same thing that's going on in the G League. And it's each man for himself. Yeah. Like I've seen teams. Five games to go. They need two wins to clinch a playoff spot. And they're like, we don't care. It, it, it's like, every, it's every playoffs himself, in, yeah. in minor league baseball, it's a point of pride. And there are some players that care. But for the most part, it's every man fighting for whatever crumb he can find. And it's yeah. hard to get a team to buy into a team concept. Because well, at that level, it's 25 different individuals that have the same goal. Get to the big. But yeah. my thing is, right now, when you look at the Cavs, you, you, you hate the way that offensively they're structured because it's a lot of one-on-one. I, pick, I understand A lot of high point. pick and rolls. So how is this kid supposed to make it to the roster? Mikey, can you answer that? If y'all saying yeah. like, that's I, I, one I do, thing I y'all I think it's a fair question, but it I just don't think it's set up that way. So before – what are his NBA numbers? Is that a curiosity? He's only played 7.4 minutes according to ESPN. He's oh. averaging like 1.7 points. So yeah. Yeah. not – And Bernie's nothing. in the house flexing on him. Bernie's <laughs> flexing behind you. <laughs> Uh, but, but Bernie, but, I have that same shirt, and oddly enough, I was going to wear it today, <laughs> and I didn't. It's a great <laughs> shirt. I, I, have, I have the same one, and I have it in brown, too. But uh, uh, So let me ask you, how many threes has he taken in those seven minutes? Uh, I'd have to look that up. It was He's got .4 out of 1.7 threes, 25% three-point percentage, according to his regular season so, averages. So that, that's 7.4 minutes per game he's played, not seven oh, minutes in total. Yeah. He's averaged 7.4 minutes, oh, in the games that in he's, the games played. Yeah, he's played. Yeah, he's played yeah. seven games. So, Sorry, so, the, the so here's the thing. So the, the big picture question is how does Imani Bates fit in? Right. The reality is, and if G. Bush was here, G. Bush is, is kind of onto something here. Right now you're getting nothing from Dean Wade. Zero, yeah. zilch, nada. I just there told is, you where. I'm ag- that's what I'm saying. I'm agreeing with oh, you and G. Bush. Oh, yeah, okay. you're yeah. I was, I was, was literally I was telling you if G. Bush was here, what he would say. Yeah. <laughs> so when I say I'm agreeing with you and G. Bush, just because I'm looking at you doesn't mean I'm trying to argue. I'm telling you, you're right. Like, Dean Wade's getting – you're getting nothing from Dean Wade. So yeah. those minutes – are, they're wasted. They're wasted. Yeah, right? you Niang's, can use those for, for developmenting, uh, d- developing your first round pick. Niang's playing better, and and he does have a crucial role in what he does. Amani Bates can't do. They yeah. are very different players. They're both shooters, but Niang is a really good help defender. His rebound numbers aren't there, but his box out rate's phenomenal, and he's a glue guy. If you ask anyone on the team, and I was talking to some of the Cavs coaches this past week, he gave a speech after practice in Golden State. That they think could be like the the kind of the spark of this team and Chris Feeder the galvanizing moment of the season early on, but it it's been him. It's not Donovan Mitchell. It's not Darius. Gar- George wow. Yang's kind of been I the guy. You, that's a tad disappointing to me that it's not Donovan George Mitchell. Yang, George Yang has more why. playoff it's experience. Not to me. I, I I understand why it's not, <laughs> yeah, it's but not it's not disappointing me. to me that yeah. a guy who's been with the team for ten minutes is stepping up and giving a rally speech after a practice in a particularly bad game. Yeah. That that needs to come from, if not Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland. He's been oh, here longer. It, it's Niang. Niang is wow. Kind of, that's kind of the, the like unspoken one of, leader here. One of them is one of them, and George Niang feels like oh, I could see myself being here long term. One of them's like, one of them's wearing a Mets hat. Yeah. How many? How many <laughs> more games we got left? But 
the, the back to the Imani Bates part. You have minutes in Dean Wade that you're playing that you're getting nothing from. You have a couple other guys, and we've seen Craig Porter. Like they've tried to get him in. Yeah. Amani Bates is on a two-way contract. So right. he has NBA games where he's going to play. There are going to be situations where Amani Bates is asked upon to play a bigger role for the Cavs, and maybe it's on a road trip. It, it, it'll come and go. He can only play so many games in the NBA, so he can't come up too early <laughs> in case he flourishes. What is that number? Do you know? It's 50. Oh, only really? only 50. So it is a good chunk of the are season. Are they getting the games out of the way now so that he can be a factor at the end when it counts? The G League season's shorter, so... They could be trying to save games. Right. But how Imani Bates does fit in is on the second unit, when either Darius or Mitchell is out, and especially if Lavert's hurt, and Lavert has been in and out of the lineup, when Lavert's on the court with either Garland or Mitchell, there's just not a lot of ball handling duties to go around elsewhere. Right. That's why Craig Porter's been such a good fit, because he actually doesn't need the ball to be a successful option. Right. On, on defense, he does other things. If Lavert's out, that second unit minutes – alongside a Garland or a Mitchell is where I think Imani Bates can fit in because you need someone else who can create some offense. Struess isn't a creator by himself. Niang's not a creator by himself. No. Don't get me started on Mobley and Allen. You can't no. play They should offense. be, though. They, but they're not. But they're not. And you can't sustain those minutes on the bench without your superstar if you have one creator. It's too easy to funnel, even in the regular season, five guys towards one smaller guard. And, Mikey, I think that's, that's when this team in. looks most lost. Yeah. In the in – the, in the, the example that you just gave, the, and there are, and those voids sometimes seem like the stretches are going on for far too long, and you're watching and you're saying, this in no way, shape, or form can win playoff series. It I just agree. can't. I agree. I don't care what the individual talents are. Yeah. You know in basketball and in every sport that's a team sport, it's the sum of the parts, and these parts right now don't click. They don't match, and I don't know, and I think... I do think you're onto something. I think that's it because as I'm watching the games, I'm noticing the same thing and I'm saying, okay, who's it going to come from? Yeah. Who is that guy if not your main starters? And that's in the playoff games when those rotations shrink and your matchups become so much more important, mm -hmm. you can't lose them. Yeah. And against the, against the Knicks, they didn't have a – I mean, I, I can't think of outside of maybe the starting rotation for a minute – where they had an advantage once you got into the game and rotations they got were underway. They got destroyed by the Knicks bench in the playoffs. Destroyed it was by the Knicks embarrassing. Bench. And that's why they came in and they got Niang, who's a massive upgrade on the bench. Right. But once again, the guys they brought in to help the bench, to help solidify that unit, they're not necessarily creators. And, that, and that's a tough thing to find. It's not like they're just these bench guys who are shot creators just fall off trees. But they did things that the Cavs needed. They did, yeah. And, that, and that's where the, the draft pick of Imani Bates was so smart. A, the talent was there, but B... <laughs> <laughs> Theoretically speaking, he fills the need. Now, he yeah. still has to learn how to play within the team concept. Like I said, 27.4 points per game. He's taken 11 threes. He's, he has five assists in six games. So, like, that part of it still has to come together. But yeah. what he does, what we saw coming out of college, what we all loved about Imani Bates, he's doing in the G League now. Yeah. So it's transferable from college to the professional yeah, level. Yeah, but the big question now, is, is it transferable the next to step, the NBA? And, not, and, and I don't think that's the question. It's, it's can it fit within the system? Because he can't yeah. play like he's doing with the charge with the Cavs. No. It, 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 that doesn't mix together, but can he find a way to fit in? Is the talent there that translates? Yes. It's can he figure out, hey, I got to find a way to get my shots up when I don't have the ball, and I have to find a way to be a contributor on defense, help defense, rebounding because he's 6'9". He's doing actually five rebounds a game. It's pretty damn good for him. That, that's, that's over what I would expect, but the talent's there with Imani Bates. The talent is there. Now the Cavs got to figure out a way to incorporate him into – their offensive scheme and system Good to get boy. the most out yeah, of it. Yeah, and to harness it. And, and to, you're right. I mean, he's just got to be more of a team player. That boy don't touch the weights, boy. That makes me No, mad. he's big. And I hope that's <laughs> another thing that we weights. see from him year to year. I hope that physically there's some change to his body. Jared Allen, has. there's been a little bit of physical change. I would, I'd still want more. But with him, he looks like Mr. Salty on the pretzel box, man. He is thin. Well, I know we got Bernie coming in. Last thing on Imani Bates. <laughs> Am I wrong? No, <laughs> he is. But I just seen him dribble the ball. I'm like, man, his arm looked like me in high school. Last, last thing with Bates, though, we drafted him on potential. The Cavs drafted him on potential. He is flashing all the signs of this dude has crazy talent and things you can't teach. Good. Which is what you pray and hope you get in a second-round pick. Because you can't coach that. Exactly. And his stock is going up. He's I shown like to hear no, that. He's shown you were, nothing. You were have you been sell on him I went, I went to one of the charge games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were, and you were not – you didn't love the pick. And you I, said guys that you, you didn't would talk to from no, other no, no, no. organizations that had scouted him. Yeah. Your quote, can I say yeah. what you said? Yeah, yeah. Like, he said, 
He's got no transferable NBA skills. No, 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 no. That's what you told me. No. His scoring and shooting was transferable. They, I, I, I had NBA coaches from other teams say they, they did not have him on the draft board because they were not confident he'd ever be able to play within the team concept of basketball. Okay, that's what you told me. Yeah. yeah. They, we, he wasn't even on yeah. our boards. His stock right now oh, is up, that's, though. That, His stock that, right now is up. All right, good.